it's a drone world. Air power is becoming a lot more democratic than it used to be. The technology is there. The ability to arm smaller drones. They don't need to buy it from a, another country's military. They can buy it online. So it's a new step on the escalation ladder. And that is a huge threat. That is a huge change. So this is it. For the last 50 years, the dominant platform for power projection has been this, a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier that can take these kind of fighter jets and project them into the fight anywhere around the world. The USS Ronald Reagan has more than 5,000 crew and can move at 30 miles an hour for decades without having to stop to refuel. It carries roughly 75 aircraft. It is, in short, an Air Force in a box. Where we're standing now, this is basically uh, an yeah. air this traffic is, This control is called tower. Primary, uh, primary Flight Control, or Pry Fly, or it's a tower. It's very it's basically similar to a tower that you would have at an airfield, except it's really the tower, it's ground control, lots of coordination, it's kind of really all in one. And then we, we run as many flights probably as a major airport does daily here. These super complex $10 billion platforms have been a cornerstone of the U.S. military's dominance over the last 50 years, allowing them to attack enemy forces anywhere in the world. But now recent breakthroughs in unmanned aerial technology are threatening to make all of this obsolete. New drones are smaller and cheaper than traditional aircraft and may not require big, expensive support infrastructure like an aircraft carrier, challenging everything we know about how to fight from the air. Right Field, Ohio, small pilotless planes are revealed as one of the Army's really big war secrets. The U.S. military has been experimenting with the use of drones for almost a century. But it's only recently that technological advances have allowed drones to become a game changer for warfare. Sam Brannan, a defense and security expert, brought us up to speed on the role of unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, in the military today. Uh, so what do we have here? Uh, well, this is the past, present, and in some ways the future of UAVs. You go from very small, almost model aircraft, like in the Pioneer, up to the Predator, the icon of the latest wars. And then you have the X-45A and the Dark Star, uh, which is really what became the this RQ-170. Thing, right yep. here, this is the Dark Star? Yep. Yeah, it doesn't even look aerodynamic, it looks unbalanced. No, it doesn't. Uh, but this is really where the next generation of UAVs is, is going to go. They're going to be based on this. They started creating them in the 1990s as an experiment. And it really wasn't until 2001 with the war in Afghanistan that we realized we had a, a real need for something like this. The Predator allowed the U.S. military to monitor situations, gather intelligence, and attack targets halfway across the globe without fear of losing a pilot. Since the war in Afghanistan, the U.S. military has relied heavily on drones for operations all around the world. So, so it's a drone world, like, just it, accept it. it. It's a drone world. We, we are where we were with aviation heading into World War II where uh, World War I, you saw a little bit of introduction, you saw what was possible, but by the time World War II came around, the aircraft defined that war. And in the same way, whatever the next conflict will be between countries, between actors in a region, you will see more unmanned systems. There are now more U.S. pilots training to fly drones than piloted aircraft. But it's not just the U.S. Drones are becoming increasingly popular all over the world. To date, at least 23 governments are known to possess armed UAVs, and 79 possess UAVs of some kind or another. Militaries around the world know that drones are getting smaller, cheaper, and more advanced. And a lot of this is driven by developments in commercial technology. So we went to a civilian drone shop to see the latest in off-the-shelf drone technology. 
Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> Good to see you. Good nice. See you. Check out some drones? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Hey, hey how's it going, man? Good, Good to see you again. Hey. Are you showing us around the shop a little? Yeah, of course. Um, so this one was really set up um, so you can mount a small security camera on it and it can fly and you can, even in almost complete darkness, see what's going on. We are working on making it completely autonomous so you don't need to have any user input. It will just take off by itself, go do its mission and then it'll come back and land. And yeah, that's where everything's going right now. Two years ago, you didn't know you'd be able to 3D print this thing and fly it. Exactly, so it does no, and no one would have been able to predict that. You know, Robotics has been around for quite a while, but it's really within the last like five years that it's really taking off, you know? Literally. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah literally. Nice, cool. Uh, is there something you can fly for us? Sure, let's fly this mini. Got a warning. We can really do anything, you know, if there's something you want to build, it can be built. The cost of the technology in general has been like plummeting mm -hmm. like crazy. And that's mainly due to cell phone technology. Mm -hmm. So as all the chips and sensors that they use in cell phones, we also use in drones. So it's become way cheaper to build these. Yeah, and we actually have people come in from, you know, some of the aerospace companies in the area and they are surprised of how advanced the civilian drones are. Right. Because they have like seven year plans to build some of the features that we already have. As cutting edge drone technology becomes more and more widely available and can be used by anyone to pinpoint or attack a force, countering this new threat has become a top priority for the US military. That's why they created Black Dart. This is Point Magoo. It's a naval weapons testing facility, and we're here to see Black Dart. Black Dart's an operational exercise that's been classified up until this point. But essentially what it is, it's the military's attempt to figure out how to counter the use of drones or unmanned aerial systems. Because of the classified nature of the exercise, filming was severely restricted. Even the exercise's test director was guarded about disclosing too much. The uh, Assad regime in Syria just shot down a, a little phantom drone that I can buy for a thousand bucks. Is this what the future of the battlefield looks like? It will be a component of the modern battlefield. I wouldn't go so far as to say that is going to be what is, but it'll be something, it'll be a component that we will have to deal with. It doesn't take much these days. You know, if you've got a motor and a propeller and a wing, you can uh, put together a, your own little UAV in a garage. Uh, all the way up to more complex systems that we see are being developed. So yeah, we absolutely have to take that into consideration and we, that's what we do here at Black Dart. Of course you can shoot down a big, slow drone with a fighter jet. If that's all there was to it, then there'd be no reason to have a big secret exercise. Instead, Black Dart's about what to do when the old tried and true ways of blowing something out of the sky don't apply anymore. Drones are getting smaller and harder to hit. At Black Dart, Engineers are experimenting with new tactics to shoot down drones. What's happening behind me right now is that a 64 Apache helicopter has been loaded with a Hellfire missile. It's going to take off, approach one of the drones, and theoretically shoot it down with the missile. But even though they were able to successfully shoot down a drone during this exercise, using a $35 million helicopter firing a $100,000 missile to shoot down a $1,000 drone isn't the best bang for your buck. So Black Dart's looking at other ways to take out drones. This is what makes Black Dart so interesting. It's a technological game of cat and mouse, figuring out how to kill drones using everything from miniguns to lasers to drones themselves. And at the extreme, they're even rethinking what it means to take out a target altogether. We have to be ready to counter that spectrum of UAV threats. Uh, and sometimes it makes more sense to disrupt it using a non-kinetic technique. Non-kinetic disruption is military jargon for everything from jamming electronics to offensive cyber attacks. And Black Dart tests a whole range of highly classified technologies that anticipates a future where drones may be so small as to be virtually undetectable. As the cost and size of drones approaches zero, 
it ultimately may mean everyone gets cheap, practically invisible air power. So it's no wonder that the military is here at Black Tart trying to get a head start on figuring out what to do about drones. And the rapid evolution of drones makes it harder to predict their future capabilities, which makes it even more difficult to predict how to stop them. The huge range of tactics and technologies being tested at Black Dart show that even the largest and most advanced military in the world is going to have to scramble if it wants to get ahead of the curve on drones and stay there.